Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video we're going to have a look at navigating around Home Assistant. Check it out. In my previous couple of videos we've had a look at installing Home Assistant on an SD card on a Raspberry Pi and on an SSD on a Raspberry Pi. So if you're watching this video I'm guessing you're at that stage now. You've got Home Assistant set up and you're ready to start having a look around and see what's what. So let's jump on straight into it. So here we are on our first dashboard, also known as the Lovelace dashboard. And this is pretty much exactly where we left off last time. Just below my picture right here, there's a little box that says, do you want to stay logged in? We're just gonna hit yes here. And what clicking that box will allow you to do is just stay logged in. So every time you close your browser or open and close a new Home Assistant session, you won't have to log in. So you ain't gotta put your username and password in every single time which is ideal if you're accessing it from your own computer or another personal device. So as I mentioned, this is what's known as the Lovelace dashboard, and that's what it's called in Home Assistant, but you might see this on the forums or in groups and posts just referring to the dashboard, and when you see that, that's what this means here, so this is your dashboard. So the dashboard is going to be the place that you come to view any of the information, have a look at any of your cards, your integrations and entities. It's just the front end for all of your Home Assistant. Another terminology that you might hear for the dashboard is the Lovelace UI. And what's cool about the dashboards is usually everyone's is pretty unique because it's tailored and made by you for yourself for whatever kit you have in your own house. So everyone's is different and you just build it to however you see fit. The main content of the dashboards are cards and entities. And we're going to come on to cards and entities in just a second. I'm just going to give you a quick high level look at all the stuff you can see on the screen here. So with some handy color coding, let's break this down and see what we have here. So we'll start with a nice easy one. The yellow section here is your hamburger menu. And what that is, is just a menu that's always there. It's persistent and it is collapsible. So clicking on the icon up in the top left here will collapse the menu and it will just shrink it down. So you can just click that icon to shrink it and click it again to bring it back out, which is handy if you want to just get a bit of extra screen real estate. So this menu is also known as the sidebar. And from within the sidebar, you can access the various other sections of Home Assistant by just clicking on the items. Next up, we have this sort of red rectangle here. And this red rectangle contains your dashboard tabs. So just to get the terminology correct with how Home Assistant references it, uh, in that red section, um, the, the tabs, as I'm calling them, are what is, what is known as views. And in that section, you can have many views. Um, but for the rest of this video, I'm probably I'm just going to keep calling them tabs because that is what they are. So in this current section, we have just the one view. And by default, it's titled Home. And the view is actually also called Home. Now, in Home Assistant, you can have many dashboards. And each dashboard can have multiple tabs. So all tabs have contents and within this particular contents we have two items and the contents area is marked out in this blue square. So the two items that we have here in the light blue we have some badges and in the pink we have a card. And then last up in the top right corner there the little green square that is your settings menu. To recap we've got the sidebar there in yellow, the content area there in blue, the views or tabs at the top there in red. Then we have the green square in the top right corner, which is the settings menu. And then in the content area, you fill that then with cards, different types of cards. Um, and along the top above the cards, you can have badges. Nice and straightforward so far. Okay, so that's an overview of the UI. So now let's start having a little poke around. So all aspects of Home Assistant can be customized. You can customize your theme, your colors, your menu styles, you can customize all of the content that fills your whole dashboard. We're going to start off by having a look at cards and what a card is, is a visual representation of some information in a styled manner. So on our dashboard here, this is one of the more basic cards and this is what's known as an entity card and this is a weather entity card. So it's visually showing us the weather and the temperature for where I'm located. Again, with cards, you can set its style, its colors, however you want it to look, you can manipulate and change that. And you can also give cards actions. So when you click on a card, something happens. Let's have a look at the weather card here for an example. So with the weather card, we can see some basic information about the weather. 
when we click on the weather card, we get a little pop-up that gives us some more detail about the weather. So within this expanded view, we can see more information about the weather. And each one of these bits of information is what's known as an entity. If you think of an entity as a bit of information in Home Assistant, now Home Assistant is made up of lots and lots of entities. And each entity is useful in some way because it gives you an individual bit of information. And then that information can be used say in an automation or a script. So from that example, we have say a temperature entity. We could use that temperature entity to automate something. So we could say, if the temperature is below five degrees, then do something. Also in this detailed view, it's what's known as a split view. So we can see details and history. So just click in history there, we can see some history for that weather. And then in here we can see it was cloudy and now it's currently rainy. So if we wanted to add more cards to our dashboard here, what we'd need to do is click the settings button in the top right and then choose edit dashboard. Now we'll get this pop up, which will ask us if we want to take control of our Lovelace UI. And what it's telling you here is that currently this particular dashboard that we're using is currently being managed by Home Assistant. And what that means is that whenever you add new devices, entities, integrations, anything that can be displayed as information, Home Assistant will automatically try and generate cards to fill your dashboard. Now, this might look a bit scary for the first time, but we're going to just choose take control here. And what that's going to do is give us the control then to add our own cards and it's going to stop those auto generated items being added in. But don't worry, if you want one of those auto generated dashboards, um, when we add another dashboard, they automatically start off as auto generated dashboards. So you can add another one of those back in quite simply. So from clicking on that little edit dashboard button and then taking control, you may notice now that we can see a couple of extra items on the screen. So we have this blue add card button and then there's a couple of bits along the top here that weren't there before. So starting from the top then, we have a title here. So this is the title for all of the views that you have. Currently here we have just a one view called home. Next to the home view there, there's a little plus button. Clicking that, it will allow us to create another view. Now, I'm not going to cover every single one of these items here because um, there's a lot to go through for the Home Assistant navigation. So I'm just going to point out the important ones here. With a view, you can have either a title or an icon. You can't have both, so you, you choose it's either or. So let's create our first custom view here and we're just going to give it a title of new view. But then we we'll just want to hit save. And now you can see we have two views. We have home and our new view. Clicking between the two views will change a view. So here, our home view, we have our weather card. And on the new view, we currently have nothing. The two arrows on either side of the view allow you to reorder each tab. This is handy because if you've got a whole bunch of them, especially on smaller screens, you have to scroll through them. So reordering them will allow you to quickly access the ones you want. So again, you can just click the little arrows there and they'll swap places. Click them again and they'll swap back. When you're setting up your dashboards, generally it's a good idea to just have a little mess around and a play, see what works, see what fits in with your designs. If you're using Home Assistant across multiple devices, it's a good idea to test them on those devices because if it looks okay on your computer, it might not look the same on a shrunk down device, so say on your mobile phone with a smaller screen. Um, a way around that is Home Assistant allows you to create those multiple dashboards. So you could have a dashboard for your PC and a dashboard for your phone. And with each dashboard, each device allows you to select a favorite dashboard. So when you open Home Assistant on that device, it opens up that uh, whichever you set as your default dashboard. So we've decided we don't like the name New View. We want an icon instead. So let's have a look at how we do that. So we're going to start by clicking the little pencil icon next to New View. That's going to open up the configuration menu. So here we have the title that we set before. And there's an icon option here. Home Assistant makes use of an icon pack known as Material Designs and what that essentially is is a set of icons that can be referenced and used throughout Home Assistant. Let's have a look at setting our own icon now. So we're going to just cancel out of this and we're going to open up a new tab and we're going to want to go to materialdesigniconscom From there you'll see a big list of icons and you can use any of these as your icons. If you have an idea or a theme for a specific icon, there is a search at the top so you could enter whatever you're looking for there. So let's say we were looking for an icon of a dog. 
We can type in dog and do a search for that. That's then returned a few results for dog. So say we like this first one here, we can just click it. And the tag for that is here and the tag is just dog. So we could copy that. If we come back to home assistant then, and we're gonna go edit again on our new view and in the icon, we're gonna just paste that in there. Now you'll see it's red. In order to fix this, we have to correctly reference the icon and you do this by adding the prefix MDI colon. Once you do that, it should go blue and you'll see the little icon of the dog there. While we're here, I'll just quickly show you the URL. So the URL inherits whatever you put as the title by default, but say we want a custom URL. So this will be our Lovelace dashboard slash whatever we put here. So say we wanna just call this dog. We can then get this by doing the forward slash dog and I'll show you that now. So we've got our dog icon and our URL as dog. Let's just hit save. And we're gonna refresh this now and it's gonna take us to our main page of our dashboard, which is home. We're then gonna click our little dog icon and you can see here now that the URL is followed by the word dog. With the title or icon, it was either or, and we chose an icon, but we did leave that title in there. So if we have a look, if we just hover over the dog icon, you'll see then in the tooltip that it's got the title. So you can see the dog and then the tooltip new view, which was our title. Another thing to notice that by refreshing the page, it's actually taken us out of that edit mode. So you'll see that the add card and the menu options at the top have now disappeared. Another way to close out of the editor is just by clicking the little X icon in the top left corner there. If you click close on that, it will take you out of that editor. In order to get back into that, we would have to click the edit menu again. So let's do that now and just add a new card to our dog tab. So we'll go edit dashboard and then we're gonna add a card. So when we choose add card, we'll be presented with this big menu of all the different card choices there are. Now there's a lot of cards and there are plenty more that keep being added. This might seem overwhelming at first, but once you've had a little play around with it, you'll get your head around it. So you can have a little scroll through and just see what there is. The more you sort of play around with this and experiment, the more you'll understand and learn them. So when you first start adding cards, you can choose to add a card by a card type or you can add a card by an entity. Now, as we've just started Home Assistant, we haven't got many entities, so we haven't got a lot to work with at the minute. So again, we've got a split view here. So if we search by entity, here's all the different entities that we can currently use and display information about. If we wanted to create a card based on an entity, we could choose an entity from the list here and just tick the box. You could then click continue and it will offer you a preview for what that entity would look like as a card. You can add multiple entities to your selection and it will just generate a card then based on whichever entities you select. We're not gonna do that in this instance. We're just gonna create a card by using one of the cards from the menu. Okay, let's hop back to the by card section. And let's add a couple of entities to our new dog dashboard. So we're gonna hit by card. So here on our home dashboard, we had the singular, singular entity card. And that was just our weather one. So we're going to go here for entities. And this is basically the same, the same sort of setup. It's an entity, but rather than just a singular entity, it's multiple. Um, I'll show you this now and it will become a bit clearer. So you can give it a title, a theme, a header, a footer, and then the entity that the information's about. So let's start with the title. Uh, we're going to just add another weather entity just to keep it simple. We're going to call it weather. On the right hand side here, you can see a preview of the card that you're currently building up. Again, as we've just started Home Assistant, we haven't got any themes available to us, but in a future video, I will cover how to do themes and customizations. So we'll leave the themes for now. There's this option here, color icons based on state. This is a useful one. So say if you've got a light switch, so if it's on, the, the um, icon could be yellow to show that it's on, and if it's off, it could be grayed out. You've then got a header and footer. These are extra bits of information that can be displayed on the top of the card or on the bottom. For now, we're just gonna leave that to keep this simple. And then with entity required, this is the main body of the information. So this entity is a bit of information that you're gonna choose to sit on that card. 
So if we have a look at the entities here, here's all the entities that we have available to us. So let's go with weather.home. And as before, that's just going to show us the weather for where our home location is set. As this was an entities card, it allows us to add more than one entity. So we can keep adding entities here. So we've got weather home. Let's go with the sun. And let's also go with my person card. So you can see these are all being added up here in a little preview. OK, we're happy with our first card. So we're going to click save. And there we go. There's our first card added to our dog tab. So there we are guys that's been a nice slow high level look at the home assistant interface we've had a look at the menu structures the layouts of the menus we've had a look at how to add cards and how to add views so from this video now you should be able to add your own cards based on some entities that you have and you should be able to add and customize your own views we also had a quick look at how to add in icons from the material design icon pack so this has been part one of home assistant beginners navigation in the next part, we're going to go through the rest of the side menu and cover all of the different topics and aspects of that. We'll be getting into the main guts of Home Assistant and you'll start to see the power and potential that it has. Thanks for sticking around to the end, guys. If you are a beginner and you've enjoyed this video, it's helped you out. Drop me a like rating, leave me a comment saying what you found useful and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I'll catch you in the next one.